ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم uh, the topic about raising the children and the advices of Luqman to his son. Something that is mentioned in the Quran, an important topic that we are all in need of. And it's something that cannot be mentioned in just a reminder, because this is just a reminder. It's something that needs for us to give the time to learn, especially when we talk about verses of the Quran or hadith of the Prophet we have to separate between reminders, that we need reminders once in a while. And the Prophet ﷺ used to do that to the companions عنهم, as it's mentioned in the hadith of Sahih al-Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah, the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an, that he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana yatakhawaluna bil maw'idha. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to remind us uh, once in a while. Once a week he used to remind them or so. Different than sessions of knowledge. The sessions of knowledge is something that we need to seek knowledge. We need to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. And that's why we have to have the patience to learn this one day after another, one ayah after another, one hadith after another. And this is how we increase our iman and this is we, how we get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, we learn and we act according to the knowledge. And the knowledge is qala Allah, qala Rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what the knowledge is, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the authentic hadith, and what the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose them to be the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he was pleased with them, and they were pleased with him, and they were the ones that best uh, practiced the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet alayhi uh, something that needs to be for us to remember it all the time, that this deen, is not just text that we need to interpret it our own ways. This text, this wahy, the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ was understood, interpreted, applied, they lived the deen of Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised them during their life that he subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with them. That means their application of the deen of Islam was approved and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with them and that's a great ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we can have people that are bound to make mistakes, which is the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they were not sinless people. And it's for us a great ni'mah to follow them, to follow their ways and how they learned from their mistakes and how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa raised them one day after another till they became the best generation ever brought to mankind. So this is a very important benefit. But with the reminder, inshallah ta'ala, we'll do the best we can to mention uh, the topic in general. The topic of raising the children is one of the very important ones. Something that uh, the Jannah and the Hellfire, how people will enter Jannah or may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the Hellfire. One of the means to this is our children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them and make them righteous. Amen. Some people, their children, they are the reason for him to enter the Hellfire and And others, their children are one of the means for them to enter Jannah. Is it according to how their outcome of their upbringing, how they are when they grow up? Not necessarily. Nuh السلام, his son, was a disbeliever. And nobody would dare to say that Nuh السلام, uh, did not raise his son properly. But guidance is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is something that we don't have any control. And as we heard, whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can lead astray whatsoever. So guidance is in the hands of Allah. But the responsibility is when they are being raised before a person gets married to choose a wife that's going to be the mother for his children, for the wali of the woman to choose the righteous man that he's pleased with his religion and his manners because he's going to be the father of the children. This is how the Muslim look ahead for things because we read Quran and we know the way of the Prophet The matter is not just people getting married and that's it. Everybody gets married. But for us, this is an act of worship. This is Quran, Sunnah, the Prophet وسلم, ayat are being re revealed. Most of the human beings are very selfish when it comes to this. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to look ahead and to think ahead and to seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So that yes, we fulfill our desires and that's why al-qabool or acceptance between the husband and the wife should be there before they get married. But at the same time, it's not just about the physical aspect of things, it's also the outcome of things. So this is that where the ulama, they talk about the first right of the child is to choose the right mother for him and vice versa. Uh, and with all the different rulings, and this is something that is so much details of this, uh, this is a very important matter. But the, the, our way of upbringing our children, when they are under our control, when they are still not in the age of the taklif yet, they are not in the age of being responsible and accountable for their actions yet, this is our responsibility to take all the means to teach them and to admonish them and to uh, protect them, whether it's the environment, their friends and so on and so forth, to teach them what is right, to raise them as uh, righteous human beings. And as we see, witnessing the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the human being, their childhood is like the longest one, right? It's uh, 14, 12, 13 years. This is a long time for people to be raised so that once they reach the age of puberty, the day they, each, they reach the age of puberty, if they die on that day, either they enter Jannah or the Hellfire. So the matter is a very serious one. So that means if they're neglected, and, and all of a sudden they reach the age of puberty and they don't know what they're doing and they're accumulating themselves sins, and you see how crime it is to leave them like this without raising them, without directing them. And again, after all, the guidance is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Luqman, uh, and the correct opinion that he was a wise person, he was not a prophet of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned his name in the Quran to be recited till the day of judgment. And it shows how great this man was. And he was very famous as it's mentioned in the ayat with wisdom. And we're not going to go through uh, who Luqman uh, is. Uh, because in, you would find in the books of the tafsir uh, sometimes the ulama, they try to find some details that might not be very benefiting for us. And this is how the ways of the Qur'an is. Mention just his name, and that's it. That's all we need. We don't need to know where he was from, what color of skin he had, and so on and so forth. Which is still mentioned in the books of the Tafsir, but what we care about is what's mentioned in the Qur'an. Luqman, alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him wisdom. Right, as it's mentioned in the ayat. وَلَقَدْ أَتَيْنَا لُقُمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ الْإِتَاءِ هُوَ الْإِعْطَاءِ when you, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him al-hikmah. That means al-hikmah or wisdom is something to be given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And anyone that wants anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the way to do that is to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A rule, a principle in our life as the statement of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, لا ينال ما عند الله إلا بطاعتي. No one shall attain what's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except by being obedient to Allah. That's why the level of Islam comes before the level of Iman. The level of Islam is the submission, obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the Iman will increase in the heart. So when we put forward the submission, when we put forward that the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we would not oppose it by our own intellect or our own taste of things, we'll just submit ourselves. Our goal is to know. And nothing but this, to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Once we know, then we have nothing but sami'na wa ata'na. We listen and we obey. What is the thing between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the book of Allah, the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet And this is the living miracle till the day of judgment. And this is what the Prophet he came out to the companions one day in the, in the authentic hadith and he told them and imagine how the Prophet ﷺ would say that and the effect of that when he said that to the companions of the Allah anhum, he said to them, Abshiru. Abshiru means have the glad tidings, the great news. What is it? What's the great news that the Prophet ﷺ is giving to the companions of the Allah anhum? and to this Ummah? The Prophet ﷺ did not tell them anything about wealth or health or anything of that nature. He told them, Abshiru fa inna al Quran. طرفه عند الله وطرفه بأيديكم من تمسك به فلن يضل بعده أبدا. He said that have the glad tidings. The great news is that the Quran, one end of it, is with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and the other end is in your hands. Whoever holds fast to it, he would never be led astray. So this is really the right connection that a Muslim, if he wants to be always connected, to be steadfast on the Deen of Allah, to know for sure what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants from us. It's not going to happen by wishful thinking. It's not going to happen because of our forefathers were such righteous people. It's not going to happen because we're decent people. 
happens by following the wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what we need to hold fast to it. And otherwise, generations when it comes, and this is, if it's mentioned in the Quran, that means if we want to study how to raise our children, this is where we guide our children to hold fast to. The book of Allah, and they would learn these words of wisdom from the book of Allah. Uh, otherwise, when generations to come afterwards, and they inherit the book, this is something that is condemned, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned it in the Quran, uh, to Bani Israel. Always the first generations, they, are, they hold fast to the truth uh, stronger. Right? And the same thing when a person has wealth, if he made the wealth by the rizq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he cares about it more than when it's inherited to his uh, offsprings. Usually anything inherited, people don't care too much about it. But when they earn it, when they sacrificed for it, they know the value of it. And that's why the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, uh, they sacrificed. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with them. But when we see the deen comes to us, uh, matters of ease, it's a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we have to put the effort to be steadfast. Uh, so Luqman, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him al-hikmah. And if we go into the details, we're not going to finish before uh, Salatul Isha. But this is where once you open the Mus'haf, once you open the Quran, you find it difficult to pass one word without giving it its rights. But we'll try to be very brief, inshallah ta'ala. So the key here before the, the admonitions or the advisors of Luqman to his son was that he was given al-hikmah, the wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the words that comes after that, it's the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what Luqman advised his son. It wasn't just for the son of Luqman. It's something for this ummah because this Quran is to be benefited from till the day of judgment. And as it's always need to be mentioned, that once uh, the Quran was sent to the Prophet والسلام, this is, uh, comes in place the messengers of Allah. If we will, we, had a, we would have sent a messenger to every village. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not obey the disbelievers and struggle against them with the Quran. Because this ayah was revealed in Mecca. There was no fighting yet. And struggle with them with the Quran. That means the Quran is instead of the messenger in every village. And this is, we have to be the, the most people that hold fast to it. And this is where the hikmah comes in place. The word al-hikmah in the Qur'an, when it deals with the, uh, many contexts of the verses of the Qur'an, refers to the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu uh, As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلْ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعْثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبِلُ لَفِي ضُلَالِ مُبِينَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed his favor upon the believers when he sent from among themselves a messenger of Allah. What's the job of the Messenger of Allah? Yatlu alayhim ayati. Reciting unto them the ayat of Allah, the Quran. And purifying their souls by the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to teach them two things. al kitab wal hikmah Teach them the book, not again and the book. Because when somebody say it's only the Quran, this is deviation of course as we see. So the Prophet ﷺ taught his ummah two things. al kitab which is the Quran, and wal hikmah al hikmah means the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, his speech and actions and so on, in which people before that, they were in clear astray. So we have no knowledge, we are uh, in clear deviation, we are ruined unless we follow the wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the way of the Prophet ﷺ. We are in total darkness, clearly, as it's mentioned in the Quran, in many verses of the Quran, unless we seek that light, which is the wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And forgive me for the long introduction, because once these principles are there, once we talk about what the verses are, that it's nothing but submission. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَوَ مَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا يَمْشِي بِهِ فِي النَّاسِ كَمَنْ مَثَلُ وَفِي الظُّلُمَاتِ لَيْسَ بِخَارِجٍ مِّنْهَا كَذَلِكَ زُجِّنَا يَلْكَافِرِينَ مَكَانُ يَعْمَلُونَ أَوَ مَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا is the, the like of someone that is, was dead. And you imagine the physical example or parable here that is mentioned in the verse for us to really see the physical as if we're touching it with our own hands for the, for the fact to be so clear. That's the benefit of the parables in the Quran. The one that is dead. Uh, then we gave him life. And the major difference between death and life. Totally different. We give him life. And that's, and that's not it. And we gave him light to walk with this light among the people. This is one case. Is it the like of someone in darknesses, 
ليس بخارج منها you would never leave it this is the example of the believers and the disbelievers this is how clear the matter should be for the believers and this light again is nothing but the wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but how can we know this wahi if we don't spend the time to learn it and to act according to it because the more we act according to the wahi the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bless it for us and bless our knowledge and our life and so on and then uh, the advisors of the Luqman, of Luqman Aislam to his son comes in order in which this order also it's something to be this is basically how we raise our children the priority what they need to know most and what's second and what's third and we should really submit ourselves to these priorities so that we do not put forward something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it second or third this is the etiquette of learning from the Quran what the Quran gave priority, this is what our priority is. What the Quran, and everything in the Quran is very important, of course. But now you want to raise your child. What are you going to raise your child to do what? And what are the things that we're going to talk to them about and advise them? And this is, by the way, is this just the advice. The practical part is something else. The, what Luqman, this is about what he said to his son. So when we deal with our children, we say things to them, which is very important. We act in front of them, which is even more important because when we say something and we do the opposite of it, that means that ruins what we say. So we have to say, we act and we correct mistakes and we deal with them and we uh, see them every day and we correct their mistakes and we're kind to them and manners and so on. And they are the ones that are closely watching what we're doing and they learn with our actions. And there is something that we don't see with our own eyes which is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that as a result of our righteousness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can bestow his favor upon us in which our children also will be righteous and this is by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why if a person wants to have righteousnesses in his, in his offsprings then he should make sure that he is first righteous and one clear thing is we should see our sins in our children when we see our children doing things that we don't approve of, this is really our own sins, our own personal sins. And that's why that should always make us repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And this is definitely one of the very important means. And then we do the physical actions and raising them and so on. So there's always means that we don't really see with our own eyes, but we get to know that from the wahi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, al tayyibin al tayyibin The pure ones, males are for the females and the wicked ones males are for the females and so on the same thing with the relationship a person have a problem in his relationship with his wife the way to fix this problem yes there might be some physical things or things that needs to be fixed specifically manners and so on but the most important thing that should be done first is for us to be among the tayyibat the tayyibin or the tayyibat if it's females that means any problems marital problems the first thing that should come into the mind of the muslim or the muslima right is to be righteous is to repent to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sins is destructive so to repent to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to change our life and to increase our matters of worship and to ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help so that we become among those who are righteous if we are righteous then if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will goodness in the relationship he will make the wife also righteous because he said in the quran that they are for one another and to one another otherwise the matter will become even more and more departing from one another that means this is a sign that maybe life won't go on the way that they want it to be so anyway so Luqman or the speech that we say to our children this is just one aspect of raising them and the first thing that Luqman said to his son Luqman is saying to his son, right? And you see the relationship between the father and the son. Uh, we don't need to talk much about this. It's such a beautiful relationship. One part of the other, right? And we don't have to exert ourselves to love our children. This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in the hearts of every mother and father, right? And it doesn't matter where they're from, how they think and so on. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. And there is great wisdom behind it. But the point here is also, وَهُوَ يَعِظُهُ الْوَعْضِ is what? Is reminding him, admonishing him. And الْوَعْضِ is when a person is reminded of what comes ahead. This is actually what 
literally the word al-wa'd means when you're reminded of something that it's going to happen in the future so you are warning you are giving good news of what's going to happen this is what al-wa'd is and that's why al-wa'd usually has to deal with the hereafter the jannah and the hellfire and this is the real admonition and this is the real uh, reminding uh, reminder of a person because it's only one path what we do now we will see the effect of it in the hereafter and it's either everlasting joy or everlasting misery and uh, the reminder is and this is what the message of the quran in general that in this life anything we say and we do we should not be trapped to the moment that we're doing things the difference between human beings that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and the animals is that the human beings they have the ability to think ahead this is what as they say al-aql wa manatu taklif al-aql or the intelligence is the criteria of being held accountable if there is no aql if there is no intelligence there is no accountability that's why the majnoon the insane he is not accountable for what he do so what is the aql basically is for is to see what uh, tastes uh, good and so on the animals they can do that or to follow their desires the animals they do the same uh, is to sleep at time of sleep they do the same thing to seek provisions the animals they do the same thing the aql is in what is to leave something now for something that you would see the benefit of it later human beings all of them they do that but it depends whether they are disbelievers or believers the disbelievers they would study and go for years in schools and they take haram loans and everything for what comes ahead or people do things for their retirement animals they don't do that and this is what the aql is for the human beings allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send messengers to call them to be patient to be obedient to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they seek the rewards from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter but as human beings we tend to forget and this is so easy we would forget in the same day 100 times we will be reminded and then after five minutes we forget everything we get to be in state of forgetfulness because of what we see and what we hear go straight to the heart makes the heart busy the person is forgetful so we are in need of the wa'ath we are in need of the reminders the admonitions and that's why the prophet ﷺ used to remind the companions of Allah anhum and they used to say to one another let's believe for an hour meaning let's increase our iman and especially in environment that we live in how would a person increase his iman if he doesn't come to the masjid if he doesn't attend not just the salah and leaves but to listen to the reminders to be reminded and if we're not reminded we will be led astray this is how the human nature is and that's why we have to humble ourselves to the reminders but here the father reminding his son this is a very important thing to be done to our children to choose the moment in which a person will have his reminder effective because usually the child does not listen from his parents really when it comes to matters of the deen because they see them all the time so there's not too much of effect there so the father has to choose the time in which he would remind his child as Luqman said or did to his son but what's the first thing that he reminded his son of with, with what ya bunayya la tushrik billah oh my son and you can ponder over this call ya bunayya right we, we need to use this language with our children don't say La tushrik billah and that's it. Do not associate partners with Allah. Right? No. Ya Bunay has a great feeling to it. Right? This is the love between the father and the son. That you are, oh my son. Right? As the prophets would call their people, they would not tell their people, you kuffar, believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which they were kuffar. Right? But they would say, Ya qawmana, Ya qawmi. Right? Oh my people. Right? And it shows how much he cares about them. Right? And it doesn't take away from al wala wal bara or to be distancing ourselves from the disbelievers. This is in the context of da'wah. You're calling someone to save him, have the concern in one's heart towards the one that we're calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Ya Bunay is such a beautiful one, right? It doesn't have to be with a way that the son does not understand, whatever language there is, but it should be mentioned. La tushrik billah, this is the most important thing of matters of admonition. Do not associate partners with Allah. Question is, how many of us really said that to our children when we raised them? Do not associate partners with Allah. We think that this is obvious. This is by default. Our children would never associate partners with Allah. Why Luqman السلام, would say that to his child the first thing? Because this is something that is, this is the message of the Quran. And the child needs to hear it and to be advised because the shaitan is working so hard for human beings to associate partners with Allah. And he adorned that for us, for them. 
And we should not feel so content and comfortable that it would never happen. Because yes, it sounds very silly for a person to associate partners with Allah. But when we know that this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can change the hearts, that means we have to have the fear of it as long as we're still alive. Ibrahim alayhi salam, one of the best of the messengers of Allah from Uil Azm and Rusul, he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَجْنُوبِنِي وَبَنِيَّ أَنْ نَعْبُدَ الْأَصْنَامِ O oh Allah, protect me, make me away, me and my sons, my offsprings, from worshipping idols. Ibrahim alayhi salam, the one that destroyed them with his hands, will make such a dua. And do we make such a dua? O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, protect us from associating partners with you, from worshipping idols. Right? We would think that we're, we're much smarter than making this dua. Ibrahim alayhi salam, if anybody that is in, in need or would not need this dua, would have been Ibrahim alayhi salam. And that's why Ibrahim al taymiyyah rahimahullah, he said, وَمَنْ يَأْمَنْ الْبَلَاءَ بَعْدَ إِبْرَاهِيمِ Who should then feel secure after Ibrahim alayhi salam? If Ibrahim alayhi salam himself is saying this dua. And that's why we see the importance of this. So that means we have to change the way that we see things and the way that we also advise our children. We need to warn them from a shirk. And when you warn them from a shirk, that means what? That means you taught them what a tawheed is, what la ilaha illallah means. And if they really perfect this meaning of the tawheed in their hearts, any goodness will come after that based on this. That, that, that they need to witness in the shirk al zulmun azim that a shirk is the greatest injustice that can ever be committed. They need to witness that with their own hearts and they see it clearly. What is the worst injustice? There are many different injustices. But what's the worst, what, what's the worst one? What's the biggest of all? Is to associate partners with Allah. Why is that? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that created us. He's the one that provides for us. He's the owner of the heavens and the earth. He's the owner of everything. He, the one that created us when we do not deserve to even be living on the face of earth. He gave us life without earning it. And he's the one that takes our souls. And he's the one that owns everything. And if that's the case, should when people then turn to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how unjust that is. People, human beings, they would consider that foolish actually and they would laugh at the person doing this if you go to a store uh, selling whatever they're selling and a person would wear a different t-shirt the, for the competitors right uh, the logo of the competitors is weighing it but right? instead of uh, the, the the place that he works for you will be fired you're working for that place you have to have loyalty to it right and this is in the life of the human being that is not too much value in it how about how about the heavens and the earth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us Everything is owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People turn to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How uh, evil that is. So this is the worst injustice and, and the children need to witness that. And it's clearly mentioned in the Quran in many verses. How the way of the Quran uh, that leads the Muslim with the ayat that talks about the rububiyyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Rabb, the owner, the creator, the sustainer. Then as a result of that, worship him alone. Do not associate partners with him. Turn to him alone subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he is the one that is ever living and never dies, why should you rely on other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Rely on someone that dies and gets sick and smells bad and so on and so forth. Put your trust on the one that is ever living and he never dies. Right? And this is, uh, again, it doesn't need too much of intelligence for a person to figure that out. If we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his names and attributes, if you know that he's the most wise, that means he does not create us for nothing. He created us for a great reason because he's the most wise. And what's that great reason? He sent the messengers to call the people to know this, which is worship none but him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what the first thing that Luqman said to his son. So that means this is the priority in our life. And the tawheed versus shirk, it's not something that we would know by just watching or the children watching us. We have to teach them as Luqman did to his son, especially in the environment that we live in here. And they are being hearing all kinds of things left and right. And they see it with their own eyes. They don't hear kalima to tawheed all over the place where the person with the Muslim hears the adhan. By the way, uh, anything that you would find in the deen of Islam, it's meant to be this way. It brings a great benefit. And if we don't see it, if we don't put ourselves in this environment, that means we have a huge deficiency. We have to overcome this by more effort. You understand that means... If a person choose to live in a place where he doesn't hear the adhan, a poor Muslim somewhere, uh, you know, not doing anything much significant, 
But he hears the adhan five times a day. It's meant to be this way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his deen, everything is by the wisdom of Allah. So if we don't hear the adhan five times a day, it might be easy for that person far away. That means we have to do something and we go out of our ways to do something more. This is also the way to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also we have to pay attention to that also with regards to our children. Many of us, we used to hear the adhan all the time when we were growing up. We have our children here. They're not used to hear the adhan whatsoever. That changes the personality of them, changes them, changes their hearts. Because nothing, again, is we are ordered in the book of Allah or the Sunnah of the Prophet unless it affects the person inwardly and outwardly and so on. So uh, advising him not to associate partners with Allah and to teach them and to take the time out for us to learn, again, from the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet because this is the worst injustice. And then, the two verses that talks about uh, the rights of the parents. It was said that these two verses is not from the words of Luqman, uh, but instead it was, uh, again, uh, the words of Allah, everything is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it was revealed because of uh, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas when his mother uh, refused to eat, and she said that I would starve my, my, myself to death till you go back to the religion of your forefathers. And he refused and he told her, and he was very famous to be righteous to his mother. Imagine someone uh, is known to be like this. You know, people are kind to their parents, but for someone to be known that he is so kind and righteous towards his mother, that means he was doing great things. So his mother, when he became a Muslim, she told him, I would not eat till I die. And he loved her dearly and he was so much kind to her. But when it comes to matters of the deen, the matter is very clear. He did not hesitate whatsoever and he told, them, told her in a very kind way, my mother, ya ummah, right? If you have mi'at nafs, if you have a hundred soul, one come out after the other, I would never go back uh, away from this religion. In a very kind way, but this, and this has actually been extremely kind to her. And this is one of the things that the children, they need to learn to deal with their parents. You make them more miserable if you give them hope for something that you won't do. But when you give them no hope whatsoever, yes, the first impression that they will be in so much shock and pain, but they will get over it quicker. But if you give them hope, like say the son became a Muslim and the parents are refusing or something like that, and you tell them, uh, you know, they would talk to him and he's quiet. Uh, he shows some signs. He thinks that if you give him some hope, maybe I'll change my mind or something for them to be quiet. It makes the matter even worse, whether for him or for them. So he said to his mother, clearly, this is the way. Uh, so then he told them, whether you eat or you don't eat, it's up to you. And she ended up eating, right? So the matter, when it got that serious, she ate. So uh, this ayat was revealed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the human being to be kind to his mother. Why? Because human beings are ordered to be just and fair as they are ordered to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's the creator of the heavens and the earth. Hamalathu ummuhu wahnan his mother carried him weakness after weakness, which is very clear, clear when the woman is pregnant. وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَمَيْنِ الْفِصَالُ which is الفطام to wean him in two years. And anybody who has children, they know what the mother go through. And she does that with all means of love and happiness. right? And if somebody would pay her so much money to take the child away, she would never do that. right? Even though she's going through so much suffering and so on, Again, it's not because the mother is great for his or from her own self. It's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that put this in the mother. And still you see the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordering the human being to be grateful to their mothers. Although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that put that love in the heart of the mother. She's not the creator of the son, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made her the means for the creation to happen. And because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the son and the daughter to be grateful to the mother. And who is the one that should receive the ultimate and the absolute gratefulness? Is the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one that put this love initially in the hearts of the mother. And that's why the perfect love of the believers is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, anushkurli Be grateful to me, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to your parents. And to Allah, everybody shall return. And the great meanings of this. 
وَإِنْ جَاهَدَكَ عَلَىٰ أَنْ تُشْرِكَ بِمَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٌ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَ If they strive with you, they struggle with you to try to make you do the worst injustice, which is to associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not obey them, very clear. وَصَاحِبْهُمَ فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفَةً And be their companion in this life with goodness, also very clear, and there's no contradiction between both. Do not obey them in the sin and be kind to them. Some people, they don't have these things, uh, they have it mixed. If you disobey someone, that means you have to be mean to them. With the parents and with the ones that we love, it doesn't have to be the same. The same thing with the father with his family. He's the one in charge. They want him to do something bad. Or the, or the wife, she is uh, calling the husband to commit a sin, for example, or to go work for haram to make more money or whatever there is. Should he be extremely angry and do crazy things? He's in charge. By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the order of Allah. He would do what is right and be kind to her and remind her and so on. Because there's no benefit of, of doing anything else. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. إِنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأُولَادُكُمْ فِتْنَةٌ وَاللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ أَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ Actually the other ayah. يَا أَيُّ الَّذِينَ أَمَنُوا إِنَّ مِنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ وَأُولَادِكُمْ عَدُوًّا لَكُمْ فَحْذَرُهُمْ That from your wives and from, from your offsprings, they are enemies to you. Some of them are enemies to you, so warn, be warned against them. So that means what? What are you going to do? You're going to fight with them? No. The ayah says, وَإِن تَعْفُوا after that, وَإِن تَعْفُوا وَتَصْفَحُوا وَتَغْفِرُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Totally opposite to what, what might we think. It says right after that, after saying that there are some of them are enemies to you, it says if you pardon and you forgive, and forgive without reminding them of their shortcomings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiven. How is that? You would do what is right, you won't make them your enemies, you would still obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you would forgive and you pardon, and this is the job of the leader usually. Uh, and this is again a benefit here that we learn with the parents. No obedience to no one whatsoever in matters of disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a rule. One of the means of upbringing our children. We teach them that if I as your father ever ordered you to do something that is haram, tell me no, I would never do it. Even if it's I'm your father, even if it's your mother. Because the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the unconditional one. The way of the Prophet ﷺ is the unconditional way to be followed. And, and that's something that has to be very clear and we have to be careful. The son wants to make salah, for example, at a certain time or go to the masjid. And the father, and of course the son has the means to do that. And the father or the mother tell him no. And there's no reason for that and he's close to the masjid and so on. He has to obey the orders of Allah. إِنَّمَا الطَّاعَةُ فِي الْمَعْرُوفِ a ta'a is in matters of goodness. But it's a message that has to be clearly said to our children. That the obedience, the unconditional one, is not to the parents. It's to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But still in the context that the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are mentioned first, then the rights of the human beings, teaching the children that there are certain rights to be observed. The rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes first. And then the rights of the human beings and the most among the human beings that have rights on us, are the parents being alive or dead? After they die also, they have right on us to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them to be kind to their relatives or to the ones that they used to like during their life, even their friends. As Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, when he was traveling one time and he was riding a mule sometimes to uh, take a break from riding the camel and he had the imama, a, a turban on. And he saw a Bedouin in the desert and he gave him his turban and he gave him his mule. And one of the, his companions of Ibn Umar, they told him, May Allah guide you, why would you give him uh, you know, these valuable things when they are pleased with anything? The Bedouins, if you give them something small, they will be very happy. He said to, the, to, so he said to that person that this man was a friend of Umar, his father, his father, not even himself. His father was a friend of Umar radiallahu anhu. Umar is the father of Abdullah ibn Umar. See, to that extent, he saw, he saw a man that his father was a friend of his own father. And he said, And I heard the Prophet ﷺ saying, إِنَّ مِنْ أَبَرِّ الْبِرْ أَنْ تَصِلَ أَهْلَ وُدِّ أَبِيكَ بَعْدَ أَنِيْوَلْ That from the most means of righteousness and loving and goodness is that you're kind to the people that your father and your mother used to like during their life, that you would continue to be kind to them. And this is also a deficiency that we have. You know, not just the relatives. 
who your father, uh, you know, they used to, uh, their friends or their close friends. We need to check on them to see if they need anything. And even their children, to that extent, the deen of Islam is ordering us to be kind to these people. Follow those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then everybody shall return. Again, the reminder that everybody shall return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will be informed for what they used to do. Uh, still, the applications or the orders are not there yet. Still, the tawheed and protecting him from shirk. Ya Bunaya, innaha intakum ithqala habbatin min khardal, fatakum fi sakhratin, aw fi samawati, aw fi al-ard, yati biha Allah, inna Allah latifun khabir. Oh, my son, the, the call is being repeated. Ya Bunay, oh, my son, the importance of saying that all the time. If it's the weight of a mustard seed in a rock, in the heavens or in the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring it. Something to remind the children always of the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able of all things. That He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. Something that we should interact with our children all the time. The doer of things is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is how we need to be truthful with ourselves and our children and our co-workers and everyone else. It does not just rain, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send the rain. It does not just become beautiful weather by its own self. The weather is not beautiful like this. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He bestowed His favor upon us that the weather is nice. And if it's rainy and stormy and everything, the Prophet sallam, that used to be shown on his face alayhi salatu wasalam. That his color of his, his face will change alayhi salatu wasalam when the, the storm would come or when the clouds would come. And he would say alayhi salatu wasalam that this was a punishment for people. So the Muslim interact always with the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And really the state of forgetfulness that makes the parents do not say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their speech a lot affects our children. You don't have to tell the child, come let me talk to you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. No, the way that we say things. Right? We have to say, if we're really truthful, we would say the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala many times. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the doer of all things. We would not necessarily say, I brought this for you. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided for me. And I brought this for you. If you ask, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't ask me, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't mean that he should not ask you. But who is the one to be asked first and foremost is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Directing the children like this to have this relationship. And for us to be truthful when we say things. So Luqman is teaching his son that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able of all things and giving the examples. Walking, driving, you see the fleas, the, 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 the leaf falling from the trees. You would tell your son that, or your daughter that this is something meant to happen not right at this moment. It is not just happened by itself. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed this matter. If the leaf starts to come out during the springtime, every single bud is by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why, why we always witness the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we see with our own eyes. And also we witness the signs of Allah, the ayat of Allah written in front of our eyes, which is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then after establishing these tawheed and this uh, warning from the shirk and so on, this is the priority. Then everything else after that becomes easy by the will of Allah. Ya bunayya aqim salah Oh my son, establish the salah. The most important act physically to be done in matters of worship is to establish the salah. And not just once they become having some form of understanding, establish the salah, make the salah, and they have just this mechanical move of the salah, say this in standing and ruku'ah. They don't know what they're doing. They have no idea what, what is the purpose of the salah. Who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? See how the matter is? This is not just a speech that we would give to our children. This is the way of life. So that when they're standing in the salah, yes, they might not comprehend it when they were uh, still young, but they would raise to understand this. And that's why the Prophet والسلام, he said, Muruhum, meaning ordering the children to establish the salah when they are seven years old. And punish them, uh, hit them when they're ten years old, in a way that it's not physically painful, but meaning that they don't have an excuse if they're ten years old and they're still neglecting the salah. But not that all of a sudden they're ten, you need to make your salah, and if you don't, I will punish you. It doesn't work this way. If they are being, uh, making their salah when they're seven years old and they would never find, you would never find them resistant when they're seven years old. They love it so much. And you prepare them even before that. 
or you're about to be seven. And seven, by the way, is by the Hijri calendar, which comes before the other one. So this is a time when once it comes, we prepare them for it mentally. And the boy comes with his father to the masjid and he learns the etiquettes of the masjid and so on. And they are ordered to make the salah in a nice way. And they love it so much. And there's no such a thing as salah to be missed, which is a very important thing that we as parents sometimes we neglect. The fajr is too early, we feel bad, he's just seven years old. Why wake him up? This is the order of the Prophet ﷺ. Uh, you're not making him suffer. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him. There's no right to sleep at this moment. We're not created to sleep at the moment where the fajr is being called as an adhan. This is as human beings, this is a bad time for people to sleep. If, we, if a report comes that if people sleep at the time of the adhan fajr, they will have a, a terminating ill disease. Would people sleep at this time? Everybody will, will wake up immediately, right? This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in such a way that we would never function as righteous people unless we follow these orders of Allah. And if you don't wake up for Fajr, that means we have a major problems, we have deficiencies in our life that we need to fix. People would do, take all the means to go to their jobs. We would wake them up if they have final exams. And it doesn't matter if it's early or not. It doesn't matter if they slept late or not. And that by itself sets the priority in the life of our children. What is the priority in our life? If it's the school, if it's the exams and so on, no compromise whatsoever. You have to wake up, you have to do this, you have to do that. Sleep early because you have school tomorrow. But do we say sleep early because there's Fajr tomorrow? Because this is the most important thing, the most important thing and there's no contradiction. It doesn't have to be that Fajr or school. No, Fajr and school. And it doesn't have to be this or that. But which is more important? Fajr. Which is more important, the deen of Islam. It has to be clearly said like this. It doesn't mean that we belittle their school. No, we're setting the priorities in their life. If a person never went to school and died as a Muslim, or someone else, he reached the highest level of education, but died as a disbeliever. These two cases, who is better in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? But it doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't mean that we're saying, okay, don't go to school so that you'll make your salah. Of course, this is not the way we're saying, but we're saying, the priority is the deen of Al-Islam. And, and once we steadfast on the deen of Allah, everything good in our life will come and will have meanings and value to it. Understand? This is also one of the me meanings that we need to uh, spread among ourselves and our children. There is no value. This is how extreme it should be. There is no value in this life if it's not based on La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. There is no value of it. What's the value of it? Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to eat and drink and enjoy and then die and that's it? Without la ilaha illallah in our life, we have no value whatsoever. There's no value of this life as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Asr. Wal-Asr, inna al-insana la fi khusr. Indeed, al-insan yani jins al-insan. That means the human being as, uh, as, 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 as a creation of Allah, they are all in khusr, in total loss, all of them, except. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَصَّوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَصَّوا بِالصَّبْرِ Except those who believe and do righteous good deeds and they enjoy what is right and they are patient. And how much we are doing of this, that means how much we are away from the khusran and the loss. And how much less we have, that means how much close are we to the, to the loss and so on and the miseries. So that our life is to perfect this and to make sure that we're steadfast on that. And this is how again we establish that in our life first and then we educate our children then establishing the salah will come in place. Aqim salah is not perform the salah. Aqim means establish it from al qiyam. When you stand up for something, that means you're taking it serious. That means the salah to be established with its pillars and uh, oblig obligatory acts, with its recommended acts, in the full, with its conditions to make the proper wudu, to go to the masjid, to go to the house of Allah, to make the salah. Uh, this is how the salah was practiced at the time of the Prophet. We're not into the context of talking about the ruling of Salatul Jama'ah, but just a simple question. Uh, the Salatul Fard at the time of the Prophet وسلم, which is the deen of Al-Islam, where it was prayed? Was it prayed at home and homes? People, everybody, you know, the adhan, he hears it, alhamdulillah, he repeats the adhan, go make wudu and get his family and they pray at home. It was never done like this. Who are the people, what, what, what did they used to call the people that would do that at the time of the Prophet وسلم? The hypocrites. This is the act of the hypocrites at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, that they don't come to the masjid 
And the Prophet ﷺ said that the heaviest two salat on the hypocrites is Isha and Fajr. And if they know what's in it, And if they know what's in it in rewards, they would come to it even if they have to crawl to the masjid. Yes, a person says, I'm far away from the masjid. If the adhan is being said out loud without any microphones, it would never reach where I live. But with all due respect, but we choose to be in such a situation that we're in now. So there's nothing wrong with going out of our ways to come to Salatul Isha Al-Fajr. At least these are the times when we're not at work, for example. If a person is at work far away from the masjid, the Prophet ﷺ said, وَجُعِلَ that the earth has been made for me a place for wudu, if there is no water, tayammum, and salah. So the Muslim, the matter is easy. He doesn't have to go to the masjid for the salah to be established. Far away from the masjid, he prays in whatever place is. But if he's back at home, right, and taking our children to the houses of Allah, if it's something that people might relax in the Muslim world, this is not something to be relaxed here. Because if it's not the masjid, then what else? To establish the salah, and yes, there is effort in this, there is patience in this, yes, and seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should rely with our hearts on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will make it easy for us. Because we can't do it on our own, we need the help from Allah. We take the means, we seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bless your time, would bless your, your car, your house, everything. Because it's not just really these physical means that we see, it's, it's beyond this so much, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of all things. وَمَنْ تَرَقَ شَيْئًا لِلَّهِ who ever leave something for the sake of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace it by something better. Enjoying good wa'amru bil ma'roof, anil munkar, forbid the evil. So the, he's advising him not to be passive, but to be even having benefits to be ex extended. He can't stand and, st and, and stand still by seeing good is not being observed and evil is being uh, you know, uh, done. He has to enjoin the good and forbid the evil with the etiquettes of it. This is knowledge for the person to learn, to be kind and so on. وَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا أَصَابَكَ And to be patient with whatever afflicts you. In the ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ This is the, 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 strong, the strength of matters and this is how the people should be to seek the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he's ordering him to have the best manners. But because of the time, the time is tight. But uh, the last two verses, which is mentioned here, وَلَا تُصَعِرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ uh, تُصَعِرْ خَدَّكْ When do not turn your, your cheeks to people. Uh, this, the original word of this is a disease that comes to the camels that would make them always turn their face like this. So it's like the arrogant person when he turns his face from someone, right? And he's advising, ordering his son not to be arrogant, but to be humble. And do not do not walk on earth uh, with uh, with pride, right? That you're looking at people that you're so uh, cool and you're the best ever, and you want to be shown to everybody what you're wearing and what you look and how your hair is and you know, how you know human beings they tend to be like this. We're supposed to teach them to be humble and not to be to have this pride because this is kibr. It doesn't mean that we should not have good clothes and we look good, there's nothing wrong with that. This is not kibr as the Prophet ﷺ, when he was asked about that, when he said, when he forbade them from kibr, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, he was asked that one of us, he would like to have his thob, his clothing nice, and his shoes is nice. There, is that from the kibr, from arrogance? The Prophet ﷺ told them no. But then he defined, defined al-kibr for them. Al-kibr batar al-haq wa ghamt al-nas. Al-kibr is to reject the truth, and to look down at people. So when you're wearing nice clothes, do not look down at others. Oh, I'm better than him because I'm wearing this and he's not wearing this, right? And it's something that is in the heart. We have to clean our hearts on this. And we have to be careful when we look at one another. Sometimes people look down on others because of the color of their skin, because of where they're born and their nationalities, right? Or because of how they speak or whatever there is. This is an evil act done by the heart. And we have to choose to Purify our hearts from this. It's a lengthy topic, but this is also important mention in the Quran to raise our children to observe the rights of Allah uh, with the tawheed and to avoid the shirk and to establish the salah and to be kind to the parents and to be humble to others and not to have arrogance and waqsid fi mashik. Walk without being fast. That means that you're not going fast when you're walking. Walk 
in a decent way. To that extent, you're teaching your child the etiquettes and the manners. وَغْضُدْ مِنْ صَوْتِكَ Don't raise your voice, don't scream. Right? This is manners that we need to, lead, to teach our children, whether they are in school environment, or at home, or in the streets. And we should be very firm in this. There's no need for us to raise our voice. Right? إِنَّ أَنْكَرَ أَسْوَاتِ وَصَوْتُ الْحَمِيرِ That the worst, or one of the worst sounds is the sound of the الحمار, the donkey, right? It has a not pleasant sound. So the, the example of a person raising his voice, and you can see that when somebody is angry and raises his voice, he kind of sounds like this. So we're teaching them with setting the examples that this is the way to do things, to have the manners and the etiquettes. And before that, the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they do all of these things, not because of our culture, but because this is the deen of Islam. This is what pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to accept from us and, and forgive me if the matter is not focused, but uh, I hope inshallah ta'ala that it was benefiting and we need really, if the only benefit, that we need to take the uh, raising our children serious. Once we take it serious that this is part of the deen, then the next step inshallah ta'ala is easy to learn the way of the Prophet sallallahu And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide our children and to bless them and to make us righteous and to make us call that a'yun, jewel of our eyes in this life and in the hereafter. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakatuh.